Hey everybody, welcome to day 24 of our 28 days of blessing and I've got Josh Cavador back in the studio with me today. Josh, you good? Yes, episode two together. I'm excited. Yes sir, glad you're here. This is a, a interesting chapter. Uh, when I got to the title of it, it I was kind of taken back by it because um, that's just a pretty harsh punch to the face. That's a tough the, one for sure. The title is ingrates. <laughs> and I, I I was you know how you say these English words all your life and and then suddenly one day it really dawns on you where the word comes from or what sure. it really means. I've heard I've heard people call people ingrates all the all my life. I, I don't know. My parents might have called me an ingrate every now and then if I if I came in, you know, doing something I knew I shouldn't do. I, I they didn't really, but I know that word's been thrown around in my family. I, I just never stopped to really break the word down that it's in great. In other words, the root word of grateful. Mm-hmm. That an ingrate is an unthankful person. Yeah. I I don't know why that escaped me all this time, but um, I've known you for a, almost two years now, mm-hmm. and working with you closely here in the office on a lot of days, I've found out that you are generally a a good spirited person it's it's you're generally in a good mood um and and a joy to be around but you know yourself yeah. do you are are you is your general disposition a position of gratitude or do you struggle and have to ride herd on yourself in that area um i think it's it's twofold one uh, there's some things that i had to learn mm-hmm. um if you could flash back to younger Josh, I think as a, a younger adult, um, I didn't see the world in uh, the light that I do now in the sense of like I was more of a consumer based oriented person where it's like, oh, man, this all has to work out for me for me to like feel this way and feel in a good mood. But I, I believe now more so in like my charity and, and my walk with the father like you can see and like I think I set up my day personally uh, to see the good in things. And so I position myself throughout my day to do things that I enjoy and, you know, makes me think and ponder and reason like why um, there's so much to be thankful for. Mm-hmm. And when you are constantly thinking of that, it makes it harder to do the contrary so i think that's something that i i've learned as an adult to do to kind of like build that um look on life in general yeah and it's so powerful too you know i I spent quite a bit of time yesterday in the podcast i did by myself just just talking about a life is too short Mm -hmm. to walk around with a bad attitude Mm -hmm. and so I, even science has proven that Terry's mentioned a, a, a few scientists and psychologists in the book that just have said that that being having a grateful attitude actually gives you better health. Mm. It's it's crazy. So why why would I want to do live any other way? Sure. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> and I, there, I like this line in the book too, where he said, in, "Ingratitude is not only ruinous for you, but it's also ruinous for the people around you." And I thought that's yeah. powerful, yeah. because we encounter a lot of people that say, "Oh, you look, you know, if I want to live this way, it's my business. Stay out of my business. Yeah, I'm not hurting anybody." But that's that's actually not true. You, alcoholics say that, drug addicts say yeah. that, and and ingrates say that, but. Your, our attitude affects other people around us. In fact, when Israel was ungrateful to God in the wilderness, first of all, they made Moses' life miserable, yep. and then secondly, they completely destroyed their whole their family's ability to go into the promised land. Except their kids, God yep. God had to take them off the board and start over with their kids. What you 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 cover a lot of ground in your life. You're you're in a lot of different places. Sure. You, you're a, you're a networker. You have a lot of different friends, um, in the music world, in the church world, 
uh, and then, you know, on the basketball court. When you walk on a court, say, where there's potentially a lot of competitiveness and negativity, sure. the ball can get held up and guys can argue for five minutes, you know, or a lot of cussing, a lot of jawing. How do, do you purposefully try to be salt and light with that attitude of gratitude and take it to the court how, how do you how do you flesh that out in your life to be an influence to change the atmosphere of a room sure uh love that question i think it's like um i, I definitely believe um the lord and this is beyond like even spirituality in, in general but like uh Ever since I was a little kid, um, my dad and like a lot of coaches when I was a little kid made me a point guard because of the way that I thought about scenarios. And I've always tried to see the good in the scenario. So like, especially if you guys don't know about sports, like point guards usually like the brain, the extension of the coach on the court. And so I know for myself, like being able to distribute, score when I can, but distribute but more than anything, understand the temperature of my teammates on the court. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that I could do at my position for our team is that when you feel something that is causing strife is you address it mm -hmm. straight up honest. Like, hey, guys, I know that this is not ideal for us right now, but for you and for us to get better, we need to work this out. Mm -hmm. So. Um, as an extension of the coach on the floor, you're directing like the whole flow of the game um, offensively and sometimes even defensively. Um, and I think it's more of like I can be a greater influence if I understand like our team and you could bring this into church if you it's all based on having like rapport and having good relationship that Oh, okay, you know the intention of my heart. You know that I'm out for your good. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when something is said, it's addressed in a way that is for your benefit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And you're not taking any, any of it with offense or ingratitude like we've been talking about before. Yeah, that's good. And I think, you know, there's a reason why they say misery loves company. Yeah. People, people don't like to be, if they're miserable, they don't like people that have good attitudes. Um, if that is, if they want to stay in their misery, sure. they, they yeah. like it and they, they, they want to stay there. They, they kind of like being miserable. And so I think we have to kind of outlast those people. Yeah. We have to, we have to outlast ingrates and, and just keep, keep being nice. They may, they may fly off the handle at us i remember one friend from high school told me after he got saved that in high school there were days that he wanted to just come punch me in my stupid smile and that's because he was miserable you but gotta once, kill him with kindness sometimes yeah but once he became <laughs> yeah. uh, uh you know he converted to christ then he became that guy as well you know mm -hmm. so uh the question for you guys today listening is do you have an area of ingratitude in your life that you need to transition from grumbling to gratefulness. So Josh, just uh, pray for pray for us that we can have gratitude. For sure. Dear God, we just thank you for today. And uh, we just pray um, after we listen to this, Lord, that you reveal to us all the things that we can be grateful for, thankful for. You've created things in such a specific way and you love us in such a specific way. So God, let our eyes be focused on you uh, to be able to live out the purpose and plan that you have for us, but to operate in such a way full of gratitude and full of honor, knowing that you're going to take care of us as a father. We love you, Lord. Be with us today. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a blessed day. We love you.